going over a style of factoring. We've called it fearless factoring, okay? So we have our, it's called a trinomial. You have three terms. And the whole point of this is to change something from what's called a standard form into factored form. It's a quadratic, and factored form is like two sets of brackets, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what we're going to do is we have names for each of the coefficients. The first coefficient in front of the x squared is called a. The coefficient in front of the just x is called b. And the constant term is usually called c. So we just have to make sure that we can figure out which is a, which is b, which is c in the equation. So what would be my c value? Negative 3. Negative 3. What would be my b value? Um, 10x. Yeah. Or we actually just focus on just the value. So just 10 in this one. Excuse me. And what would be the a value? A. 8. 8. That's right. Perfect. Okay, good. So now that we know that, that's really, really important. Um, what we need to figure out are two numbers that multiply, just like you were talking about before. They multiply to whatever a times c is. Okay. And those same two values need to add up to whatever the b value is. Okay. So what is our a? 8, eight times negative 3. three. Yeah, so 8 times three. negative 3. Do any of us know? Negative 24. So we need two values that multiply to negative 24. And we already know our b. Our b is 10. Okay. So probably the easiest way to go about this is thinking of factors of 24. Okay. Um, so we have 1 and 24. Do 1 and 24 add up to 10? No. No, nah, those don't work. Uh, another set of factors are 2, 2 and 12. Um, 2 and 12. Do 2 and 12 add up to 10? Yeah. Not quite, but if I were to manipulate one of these numbers, could I make them add up to 10? Yeah. I could. So, and this is what becomes important. Remember, it's not just 24, it's, it's negative 24. So what that means is one of the factors has to be negative. So let's say we had negative 10 and, that's also to write numbers, negative 12 and 2. Uh, negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. Negative 12 and 2 is not positive 10. So I didn't make the right one negative. So, so it's a negative 2. Negative 2 and 12, they multiply to 24. Negative 2 and 12, they add to 10. Perfect. Those are going to be our values, okay? 12 and negative 2 and 12. Great. So we know those are our numbers. Um, I'm going to write them on the side. Negative 2 and positive 12. Those are important to us. So we've got to go into our, our factored form now. So y is equal to, I have my two lovely brackets, okay? And the second term in each of the brackets are going to be one of these. So I'm going to write um, positive 12 is one of them, and the negative 2 is the other. The first term is going to be um, the very first thing we had. We're just going to split it in two. So we have 8x and 8x. This is no longer squared. We're just going to put it into the front of both, okay? And then what we do need to do is we need to divide by whatever our a value is. We need to divide by that coefficient. The coefficient is, is 8, so we put it below. Okay, so this is how we go about doing this here. We've set it all up. We took the 8, put it below. We put 8x in both and put those two numbers behind the brackets. Okay, this is kind of like a process. Do you remember common factoring? We need to common factor a value out of each bracket so that we can eventually eliminate the 8 on the bottom. Okay, so... 8 and 12, can you think of a number that divides into both of them evenly? 4. 4. We can take 4 out. So if I were to take 4 out of here, what would this become? 4. Um, 4 divided by 8. So let's think about 4 Oh, sorry. I thought you were minus. Yeah. So we get 2x. And 4 divided by 12. 3. All right. 3. Perfect. So we've now common factored 4 out of there. How about 8x and 2? So 8 and 2. Is there a number that comes out of both of those? Two. two. Two comes out. So if I were to divide 8x by 2, what would we get? 4. Yeah, yeah. we'd get 4x. And what about negative 2 divided by 2? Cancels it out. Uh, yeah, and what does that create, though? It okay. creates a value. <coughs> Pardon? Sorry? Negative 1? Yeah, creates a negative 1. 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So that's nice. We've got it factored. What the heck did that do for us? We still have our 8 on the bottom. Well... Um, because this is multiplication, and there's a rule of multiplication, it's called associative property. And what it is, it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in, because you end up at the same. Think of it like this. What's 5 times 2? 10. Yeah. What's 2 times 5? 
Yeah, it didn't matter what order we did it. So let's rearrange the order of this. Um, let's put the two uh, constant terms beside each other. So it's 4 times 2 times 2x plus 3 times 4x minus 1. And I'm showing every single step. Eventually, you'll get so good at this, you can just kind of skip this step I'm showing here. Um, I can actually simplify what's 4 times 2. Can we figure out what 4 times 2 is? 8. Yes, so these become 8. Okay. So now I have 8 times 2x plus 3. Ooh, it's lagging. There you go. 4x minus 1. And then all of that is divided by 8. Well, what is 8 divided by 8? What do those become? So. Yeah. Well, technically, it becomes 1, but, but it's the right idea. Yeah. They cancel out. So they cancel out, and we're now in our factored form. Now, I showed you everything step by step. I'll quickly talk about how we could have done this mentally just a little quicker. I just wanted to make sure you saw every step when we went through. It's really lagging there. Don't die on me, computer. Here we go. Okay. Um, once we got to this part here, if I could visually see 4 times 2 is 8, I could have gone... That all disappears, and we're just left with these two brackets. And if you can see how I did it in two extra steps. But that's all that really happens. 4 times 2 is 8, so the 4 and the 2 and the 8 all disappear, and these two are all we're left with. So that's like a quick way of skipping these two things here, okay? So this is a style of factoring that's similar to the idea of finding the two values that multiply and the two that add up together. Um,